Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Nabetre. Here I'm dermatologist today. I want to talk to you about the cutaneous sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is a multi system granulomatous disease affecting all races and ages, but mainly the ages between 25 and 35 and 45 and 65. It's it characterized by increased cell mediated immune system, mainly T cell and macrophages that finally resulted in granuloma formation. It's associated with some specific HLA alleles, but, it, but these alleles varies greatly based on these subtypes and racial groups. Also, the definite pathogenesis of sarcoidosis is not defined, but it has been associated with some occupations and infections and also medications including healthcare workers, navy personnel, aircraft carriers, firemen, viruses, perfume bacterium, acne and use of some drugs especially interferon and TNF alpha inhibitors. The cutaneous sarcoidosis involve one third of patients with systemic sarcoidosis. It may be the only and the first clinical manifestation of the disease that mainly manifests as red to brown to violaceous papillae and plaques, mainly affecting the face but also the neck, upper trunk and extremities could also be involved. On physical examination by pressure, these lesions evolve into blanch lesions indicative of apple jelly endoscopy. Rather than the red to brown to violaceous papule and plaques, it also could manifest as annular configuration due to central clearing and also telangiectasis. Other variants of cutaneous sarcoidosis include lupus perineo, Darierusi, Lofgren syndrome, and Hilford syndrome. I'll continue the rest of subject in the form of some cases for better comprehension. A 30-year-old woman present with facial lesions since one year ago, according to these figures, was the name of his pathologic finding in the left figure. As you see here, there is a non-specific lesion on the face, and here we have granuloma formation with demarked border that named neck tubercle. What's the name of histopathologic finding in the left figure? As you see here, there is a multinucleated histiocyte. In the, in the histopathology of sarcoidosis, the multinucleated histiocyte may be as the form of asteroid body or showman bodies that these are some inclusions in the multinucleated histiocyte. Asteroid body are eosinophilic estelate inclusion and showman body are round calcification in the multinucleated histiocyte. Both are not specific for sarcoidosis but are indicative of sarcoidosis. A 30-year-old female with this nasal lesion since 8 months ago, which blood test do you request in this case? As you see here, there is a red to brown flag on the nose, and here we have neck granuloma indicative of sarcoidosis. As you know in sarcoidosis, ACE level is increased. Actually, in 60% of patients with sarcoidosis, we have increase of ACE level, and also we have increase of ANA in 30% of patients. Nodular lesions since six months ago with red to brown hue. What's the probability of lung involvement in this case? As you see here, there is a nodule on the nose with red to brown to violaceous color, and here we have neck tubercles. As said before, tubercles are granuloma with demarked border. And a neck tubercle is a kind of tubercle in which there is a sparse infiltration of 
lymphocytes in the periphery of the, tu of the tubercle. The tubercle is a, a well-demarked granuloma and it's not confined to sarcoidosis but also could be found in tuberculosis, some kind of leprosy and granuloma formation by beryllium and zirconium. All these findings are indicative of sarcoidosis. This kind of sarcoidosis, this cutaneous kind of sarcoidosis that involve the nose and cheek and that resembles perniosis is called lupus perineal. Lupus perineal is not related to lupus erythematum but as a resemblance with perniosis it Call it, it's called the lupus perineal that mainly affecting the nose and cheek. The importance of lupus perineal refers to its association with sarcoidosis of lung and upper respiratory tract that in that it involved that it's associated with lung sarcoidosis is in 75 percent of cases and upper respiratory tract sarcoidosis in 50 percent of cases. So the probability of lung involvement in this case is 75%. The patient is fibroid with tender plaques on both shins since five days ago. Chest is X-ray hilar lymphadenopathy. What's the diagnosis? As you see here, there are red to brown papules on the nose, and here we have neck granuloma indicative of sarcoidosis, and here we have tender plaques on both since since five days ago and here we have septal paniculitis indicative of erythema nodosum. the combination of sarcoidosis fever febrile erythema nodosum and hilar lymphadenopathy on chest x-ray and arthritis are Lofgren syndrome that mainly treated with supportive care, but in some cases corticosteroid is administered. Subcutaneous nodules in a 53-year-old man since one year ago was the most common association with this disease. As you see here, there are some subcutaneous nodules, and here we have neck tubercle indicative of sarcoidosis. Then Yerusi is a variant of cutaneous sarcoidosis in which we have painful film subcutaneous nodule that is associated with systemic sarcoidosis. So its association is with systemic sarcoidosis. And here, a 45-year-old woman with facial lesions since six months ago is presenting with fever and blurred vision and seventh nerve palsy was the most probable finding in this case. As you see here, there is also violaceous plaque and here neck granuloma indicative of sarcoidosis. Here fourth syndrome is a combination of sarcoidosis with fever, parotid gland enlargement, uveitis as blurred vision, and cranial nerve palsy, mainly seventh nerve palsy. So the correct answer for this question is parotid gland enlargement. And the last question, was the triad of sarcoidosis in children? This triad includes cutaneous sarcoidosis, uveitis, and arthritis. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, I'll continue. I, I'll talk about other cutaneous diseases.